Hola, ¿cómo estás? Muy bien, ¿estás listo para continuar con las palabras de la familia? Sí, hola papá, hola mamá, ¿cómo estás? I wonder how they're doing on your side. Uh, ¿Cómo está tu papá? ¿Cómo está tu mamá? ¿Cómo está tu tío, tu primo? I wonder if you have a lot of primos. I don't know, maybe you do. Maybe they live near you and uh, maybe they have taken a Spanish class. Maybe you have hermanos that have done that. Maybe you don't have anybody. Oh, that's, not, that's fine. But if you do have somebody like that, that would be a great opportunity to practice your Espanol. Even if they don't live right next door, uh, maybe you can send them an email, text them once in a while in Spanish. That would be really fun, you know, to, to put Spanish to practice. That's the way you learn the language, is to make it part of your life and to find any opportunity that you get to, to really use it and uh, you'll see how, how much easier it is. Uh, another thing you can do is to label things around your house. You know, she learns Spanish words, but I don't know if you can do that with your family members, but who knows? Maybe your, your dad will volunteer someday to let you put a label on him, you know, Papa. <laughs> Make sure you put the accent mark, though. Uh, you don't want to say Papa, right? Because remember what does Papa mean? Papa is potato, but uh, Papa is a dad. So let's see if you remember these words for the family. I have the picture here of a family. Ah, look at this familia. And we got padre, madre. Repite, repite. Padre, madre. Y también el papá y la mamá. There's that accent mark I was telling you about. And how about papi, mami? You know, that's uh, a way to practice your Spanish is to Maybe use some of these words with your papa and your mama, and uh, you'll have a lot more fun. But there's more uh, uh, to this. You know, what if you are talking about both of them together? Then you say padres. Remember that? And that does not mean fathers. It, when you put it together, it's just simply the Spanish way of saying parents. And uh, what about this right here? We have the abuelo y abuela. Abuelo, abuela. And if we have both of them together, remember what the word is? Oh, yes, it is abuelos, abuelos. Oh, who's that? Well, that's got to be a tío, tío, it's your uncle, and oh, that must be your tía, your tía, oh, such a nice tía, and guess who that is? You say, I don't know. Well, just pretend, use your imagination, and you say, he's my primo, my primo. Maybe you say, all right, I have a primo now, and uh, use your imagination. That would be your prima, prima. Primo, prima, and uh, if you have two of them, what would that be? Uh, that would be primas, primas. And then remember when the disaster comes home is when you get all the primos together at home. And uh, plural for everything, even for siblings, right? These would be, if they're brother and sister, what would you call them together? You say, hermano y hermana. Well, there's a more elegant way to do that. You can just say, hermanos, hermanos. Remember in Spanish when you have a plural, if it's a mixed group, you're going to use the masculine form. Unless it's a bunch of girls and you're going to say hermanas. So here's the family again. And uh, what can we say about the familia? You say, well, hijo, el hijo está loco. No. O well, el hijo es muy bueno, muy simpático, muy inteligente. And what about the padre? El papá está allí, dice hola. La mamá es muy buena. Si sí, los padres, el hijo. Now remember, the way to practice this, folks, is on your own to get a picture of your family and, describe, and talk about your family. Maybe you can't say a whole lot of words at, at this point, but you can at least say who's who in, in the picture, you know. You can say, it's papá, mi mamá. You can't even tell what their names are. You can say, mi papá se llama Paco. Mi mamá se llama Elizabeth. I'm just pretending. Or you can say, mi hermano, follow well along. Mi hermano se what? Se llama, se llama uh, Austin. See? Mi hermanito, mi, herma, mi, mi hermana, maybe you have a sister. You know, mi hermana se llama, um, maybe Elizabeth, just like your mama. Maybe, maybe uh, 
Palmira, Spanish name. Mi mamá, mi hermana se llama Palmira. Uh, maybe you have tíos. Can you tell about your tíos en español? Mi tío se llama Benjamín, Rubén, Pedro. Mis tías, mis primos. Now, I understand some of you have so many of them. You know that <laughs> it would be a great endeavor to be able to name, the, name them all in Spanish. But if you're going to practice your Espanol, take out that picture album and see if you can name everyone. And uh, maybe the Spanish part will be the easy part. Remember, know the names, maybe the more difficult part. But uh, you can even talk about relationships. Look at this picture here. Ah, look at these two hermanas. There's Laura y Lea. Las dos hermanas, hermanitas. I can ask a pregunta en español. Here's the pregunta. ¿Quiénes son las hermanas? ¿Quién is asking who? But here, here we have a plural of this. So we're saying, ¿Quiénes? Who are they? Who are, who are those hermanas? Now, how would you answer that with a full sentence? What would you say? Uh, well, when I say a full sentence, I mean, say more than just, Laura y Lea. But for the sake of learning, let's make a full statement. So you would say this. Laura y Lea son las hermanas. So Laura and Lea are the sisters. Laura y Lea son las hermanas. Let, let's pretend that you never heard me say what I just said. And let's pretend that you already know how to say that in Spanish. So let me ask you the question again. And you answer in Espanol. ¿Quiénes son las hermanas? Muy bien. Laura y Lea son las hermanas. Okay, let's see if you can do the next one. Ah, oh, this time I go back to that family we saw before. There's their names. Now we know what they're called. There's Paco. There's Juan. And then there's Becca. And let's see if you can answer the, answer the pregunta. Here's the pregunta. ¿Quiénes son los padres? ¿Quiénes son los padres? Mm. Now, if you said Juan, well, you know, Juan is kind of young to be a padre. So really, you should have said something like this. Paco y Becca son los padres. So let's practice one more time. Pretend you never heard me say the answer. Just say it like we're starting from the beginning. ¿Quiénes son los padres? Paco y Becca son los padres. Muy bien, here's one more pregunta, same picture, different pregunta. ¿Quién es el hijo? ¿Quién es el hijo? Muy bien, Juan es el hijo. Now, I have other preguntas that I can ask uh, to you just individually and answer this for real what applies to you. So here's the first pregunta. We saw some of these, but let's see if you remember. If I ask you, ¿Tienes hermanos? What am I asking here? ¿Tú tienes hermanos? Yo tengo hermanos. Sí. Yo tengo dos hermanos. Remember? How about you? ¿Tú tienes hermanos? Sí. Uno, dos, tres. Ah. How about this one? ¿Cómo se llaman? ¿Cómo se llaman? Los míos. Mine, los míos, se llaman Austin y Abraham, mis dos hermanos, ¿sí? Ah, y los tuyos, tus hermanos, ¿cómo se llaman? Uh, Susie, Joe, Peter, ¿cómo se llaman tus hermanos? Muy bien, I have another pregunta para ti. Mira esto. ¿Cuántos primos tienes? Uh, remember that one? ¿Cuántos? Uh, is it going to be like this? Uno, o dos, tres, cuatro, ¿cuántos? Uno, dos, tres, I'm asking for... ¿Cuántos? How many? ¿Sí? ¿Cuántos primos tienes? Ah, it's hard to count. And one more pregunta. Look at this one. ¿Cuántos tíos tienes? ¿Cuántos tíos tienes? And actually, when people ask you that, you know, that, that could mean just your male, you know, your, your well, your male, obviously, your, your uncles, but it could also mean your aunts, both together, uh, because the, the plural could refer to both, so sometimes it's kind of hard to know which one they mean. You have to ask for more information. So if I ask, ¿cuántos tíos tienes? Tíos, todos juntos. You may say, cinco tíos. O un tío. O veinte tíos. Muchos tíos. Sí. 
Muy bien, las preguntas de la familia. Keep working on them. Ready to learn some vocabulary? Well, whether you are at school or at home, you will want to find every opportunity you can to practice your Spanish. And what a better place to do this than when you're doing school, whether you're in the classroom or homeschooling, you will want to make sure that you know a lot of these school words, a lot of these things that you have with you all the time. So grab things that you have next to you. Maybe you have one of these next to you. What is this called? This is called lapis. Repite. Lápiz, tú escribes con el lápiz, ¿sí? Y también tengo un libro. Oh, tengo un libro muy bueno. El libro de fútbol. Me gusta leer el libro, ¿sí? ¿Tú tienes libros? ¿Muchos libros? Sí, tengo otra palabra. Now, maybe you don't use one of these. Maybe uh, at a school or a church, you will have one of these things, you know. Es un borrador. Borrador, ¿sí? Uh, borrador, repite, borrador, borrador, <laughs> difficult to, we'll work on that one, we'll work on that one, how about this one, mm. una tiza, tiza, que es la tiza, well it's these things that uh, uh, to write on the, on the, on the pizarra, and then after you write with on the pizarra you use a borrador, o although maybe you have a different kind of Tiza, maybe you don't have a, a tiza, maybe you have a plumón, which is like a marker, okay? So, muchas palabras de la escuela, but there are many other palabras. Take a look at this palabra. Hmm. La puerta. I know your casa also has a lot of puertas, but definitely schools should have puertas, right? It's the door. La puerta, repite, puerta. Here's another one. Una ventana. Una ventana. Are there any ventanas near you? Ah, hopefully so. Then you can say, the ventana. Every time you see that, say ventana. Here's another one. Un estudiante. Maybe that reminds you of you sitting there learning Espanol. And uh, un estudiante. By the way, what's up with these little words that come in front of the nouns that we're learning? Look at the, the noun is estudiante. But what's up with the little word un? Well, un is just telling us that he is a student. A student. It is the indefinite article. Un estudiante. Now look at the next palabra. Hmm, if it's a girl, we're going to say una estudiante. See that? So un estudiante for chicos, una estudiante for chicas. And let's talk about another thing. What about a classroom? What about a word for a classroom? Well, there's two words. One is un aula and un salón. And what about the word for a desk inside the salón? Well, that would be un pupitre. Now, go back and look at these palabras. Notice that they do have an article. They do have the word un. Just like the one we saw before. With a girl, it was una. With a guy, it was un. So, guy, girl, un, una. But what about things? Are you going to use un? Well, yes, un. Un aula. That's the word for a classroom. Un salón, here's the word for a classroom again. Two different words, both for classroom. Both use the word un in front of them. Even the word for a desk, that would be un pupitre. So yes, with things, you have a lot of words that use un. But guess what? Sometimes you have words that use una. Una. Hmm. Una silla. Una silla. And go back to an un word. Look at this one. Un escritorio. Now, let's pay attention to, the, to, to that un una with all these vocabulary words. Here I have a few more, just a word. We have un libro, like the one I show you here. Remember my libro up here? The one with football, un libro. So it's un or una with libro. Un, a book, un libro. And now look at the second one. We have una profesora. Oh, she's a girl. It's got to definitely be una. And then un papel a piece of paper and then we have una pizarra una tiza un bolígrafo let's see if we see a pattern emerging in here let's see if you can figure out what the pattern when do you say un when do you say una here's the next one we have un lapis 
un cuaderno, un borrador. So what is the pattern, folks? Well, let's see them again. Let's look at those palabras. Hmm, a lot more palabras per slide. Una puerta, una ventana, un estudiante, una estudiante, un pupitre. We got una silla, a chair, un escritorio, a teacher's desk, un libro, a book, una profesora, un papel, a paper, and then una pizarra, una tiza, un bolígrafo. What is a bolígrafo? That's a, a, a pen. And then un lápiz, un cuaderno. Un borrador. Well, at this point, it may be difficult to figure out that pattern. Here's the general rule. If the word ends with an O, you're going to put un in it. If the word ends with an A, you're going to put una. Look at those words that you have in your textbook and see if you find that pattern. The problem is there are exceptions to that, and also not all words are going to ed end with an O or with an A. You're going to learn more rules about that later. But for now, make sure that as you learn those words, that you learn the article along with them. The word un, un lapis, un bolígrafo, una tiza, una ventana. That's going to help you. Another thing that is going to help you is to not just try to memorize that long list of palabras or looking at the pictures on your book, but actually label the place where you study, whether it is a classroom or whether you are at a desk at home, uh, label places around there and, and that will help you remember the palabras. I got my own things here that I brought with me today, remember? Here is the libro, libro, and here is the tiza, and I have my labels here. Maybe you can do something like this. You can put a label on the borrador, put it on the other side, and then there's the tiza. Well, that would be kind of hard to label, but hey, do it. Maybe a little annoying for a while, but every time you try to write with this, you're going to be, oh, I can't stand it, but you will see the word tiza, and it's going to help you remember the palabra, libro. So, a lot of palabras having to do with vocabulario in the classroom. Get to use them. Let's see whether you know the names of the following objects. Write the number of the word you hear next to the appropriate picture. The model is marked for you. Modelo. You hear una silla. You mark the picture as shown. Let's begin. Número uno. Un bolígrafo. Número dos. Un libro. Número tres. Un estudiante. Número cuatro, un pupitre. Número cinco, una puerta. Número seis, una tiza. Número siete, una pizarra. Número ocho, una ventana. Número nueve, un lápiz. Número diez, un borrador. Muy bien. Well, for this part of the class today, I recruited some voluntarios, some volunteers. ¿Cómo están? Muy bien. No español. Nada. Cero. Well, good. They qualify perfectly for this because they're going to be like you, learning something new in español today. They're going to help me and hopefully help you as well. So pay attention. What we're going to learn is classroom commands. 
Now, I know you may be homeschooling and you're saying, well, I'm not in a classroom. That's okay, they're going to be useful commands and you can even use this even when homeschooling. Or maybe you're, a, you're at a school and well, obviously that's going to be very useful. So let's take a look at those commands first and then our volunteers are going to help us remember them, even though they've never seen them before. Uh, very good. Take a look. We got levanten la mano. Mano is a hand. So guess what we're asking you here? Levanten la mano. Here's another one. Bajen la mano. Bajen la mano. I want you to repeat that. Bajen la mano. Here's another one. Escuchen. Escuchen. And then parense. Parense. Levantense. Levantense. And one more that the teacher may tell you. We got siéntense. Siéntense. So maybe you can also practice along with our volunteers. So. What are those palabras that you need to do? Well, mano, mano, donde están tus manos? How many manos you got? You got those manos, right? Okay, so if the teacher says, levante la mano, levante la mano, what are you going to do? Muy bien, excelente, excelente, levante la mano. So let's practice, you go ahead. Levante la mano, levante la mano. Muy bien, how about this, baje, oh, teacher hasn't said the next part. Ah, I tell you, I tell you. Let's try it again, levante la mano. Muy bien, they, they learn fast, you get it? So what's the opposite? Bajen la mano, okay? Bajen la mano, ah, okay. So levante la mano, bajen la mano. Muy bien, hay muchas palabras. Escuchen, escuchen, sí, escuchen. Muy bien, escuchen. Levanten la mano, ah, bajen la mano. Escuchen, escuchen, sí. Now this is a tricky one. Párense, párense. Right now you are sentada, but you need to Parense, muy bien, parense, go ahead, dude, this is, this is a time to, to stretch, parense, muy bien, estudiante, levanten la mano, bajen la mano, muy bien, levanten la mano, bajen la mano, ok, siéntense, siéntense, gracias, gracias, muy bien, see, I tell you, even though they claim that they don't know, it's, they don't know Spanish, they're able to follow these commands, just like hopefully you can. Here's another one, what if I tell you, um, Parense, parense, what was that? Oh, it was not a new one, it was, it was the repetition. Siéntense, siéntense, here's the trick. Levantense, ah, what levantense? Well, <laughs> levanten la mano, right, levanten la mano, but levantense is just like parense, it's just another way of saying the same thing. So let's see if you remember, levanten la mano. La mano, ah, <laughs> levanta la, ah, okay, levanta la mano, now bajen la mano, si, sí. levantense, levantense, ah, si, sí. not just la mano, the whole thing, levantense, siéntense, 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 parense, parense, I tell you, muy bien, siéntense, siéntense, excelente, so take a look at these uh, instructions that the, your teacher may give you again. I have them all six here on the slide. Levanten la mano, bajen la mano, escuchen, parense, levantense. But there is more. Here's a few more. Some of these may be a little more tricky to do, but contesten en español. No en inglés. En español. Here's the next one. Abran el libro. Abran el libro. Cierren el libro. Hay preguntas? Preguntas? You got a question for me? Silencio. Uh, I like this one. You know, if, if our volunteers talk too much, I can always tell them. Shh. <laughs> Silencio. Look at the next one. What is it? It is. Miren. Miren. Look up here. Miren. Miren. Listo? See? And one more. What is it? Por favor. Si, sí, por favor. That, folks, it's maybe the most important word. You, you, do you have any ideas what that means? Por favor, favor, fa favor, favor. He says a favor. It's just the Spanish way of saying please. You know, even, even profesores, even maestros, even teachers have to be kind, you know, and say, por favor, let me, let me try this. Por favor, levantense, por favor. Ah, si, sí, muy bien. You did it? Okay, por favor, siéntense, siéntense. Gracias, muy bien. Now, for practicing the next set of words, I actually... I have to give you something. I have uh, some of my favorite libros right here. Mis libros favoritos. El fútbol, ¿sí? Who wants the fútbol? I'll give you the fútbol. And I'll give you another libro here. 
So watch this. Abran el libro. Abran el libro. Abran. See? Ah, muy bien. Good. Abran el libro. Cierren el libro. Cierren el libro. Muy bien. Abran el libro. Cierren el libro. ¿Sí? Uh, silencio. No hablen mucho. Silencio. Abran el libro, por favor. Sí, muy bien. Miren aquí. Hola. ¿Cómo están? Miren. ¿Sí? Miren el libro. Miren el libro. ¿Sí? Ah, sí. Mira el libro. Miren el libro en la página 1. Página 1. Ah, she got it. What is página 1? Ah, miren el libro. Por favor, ¿sí? And I wish I could tell you, contesten en español, but they do not know español. But I'll teach you a word in español. Can you say hola? Hola. Hola, sí. Contesten en español. And they know some español just as you do. So what are these commands that you need to know? Uh, these teacher commands. Practice them. It's the easiest way to learn them is to put them to practice. Let me show them to you again. Take a look. First, we have levanten la mano, bajen la mano, escuchen, párense, levantense, siéntense. And then we have a few more, a little more complex. I like this one. This is my favorite one. Contesten en español. Muy bien. Here's another palabra. Oh, remember this one? Abran el libro. Can you do that? Abran el libro. Ah, they can they still remember abran el libro. And what is the opposite? The opposite is cierren el libro. Muy bien, cierren el libro. Here's another one. Hay preguntas. We haven't seen this a whole lot, but I wonder if you know. Do you have an idea about that? Hay preguntas. You know, teacher says preguntas. Sí, preguntas. No, you got it? They got español perfecto. They, they know it well now. Uh, here's another one. What about uh, la palabra uh, silencio? If they talk too much, you say what? Shh. Are you talking right now over there? Shh. Silencio. No hables inglés, español, japonés, nada. Oh, aquí hay otro. Miren, miren, aquí, miren. Yuhu. Miren, ve, miren. Y uno más, what is that last one? The one where every teacher should say what? Por favor, por favor, please. So let's see if you remember. Let's do a little Simón dice. You know who Simón is? Simón dice, Simon, Simón. Okay, Simón dice, levántense, levántense. Ah, muy bien, muy bien. They remember. A little hard. They really don't know these words for real. They're learning them just with you for real. This is not stage. This is the real thing. Okay, Simón dice, siéntense. Muy bien, siéntense. Muy bien. Uh, levanten la mano. Levanten la mano. The problem is Simón no dice, right? Ah, got you with Simón no dice. Ba bajen la mano. Bajen la mano. Well, you already have your, ha your manos abajo. Uh, Simón dice uh, adiós. <laughs> Simón dice adiós. Muy bien. Bueno, hasta luego. Continue practicing these commands and uh, you'll see that it helps uh, be able to use these phrases in Espanol as opposed to just simply words. Let's practice.